So did you enjoy this week's tour portion? It shows God has a fashion sense, doesn't he? God wants his priests to look good. They don't want to come out in jeans and t-shirts. He wants us to look the part. That's why I wear the boots. I don't know why. I, I kept reading. I wanted to see the boots in. Didn't mention. I don't know why. He should have had the boots there. But what we really see also is a unique part of this passage. As we again see about the, the temple being built and the articles that are needed. We also see a family dynamic. How many of you have siblings? How many of you have ever worked with your siblings? Keep your hands raised. And of those who work with their siblings, how well did it go? Kind of hard, right? Sometimes you can do it, but let's face it, it's not the easiest thing, right? Especially, I heard who's in charge, right? What happens when it's the younger that's the one that's in charge over the older? Uh oh. Trouble is in the works, right? And we <coughs> we've seen that repeatedly in the scripture, right? How many of y'all can think from the very beginning? Cain and Abel, right? He killed his brother, right? And then denied it, right? Jacob and Esau, he starved his brother to death, right? Trying to get, get him the blessing. But then we have two brothers, Ephraim and Manasseh. And something changed there. No longer did the brothers fight, did they? Even when the younger was given the position over the older. And guess what happens next? The next two brothers we deal with in the scripture are Moses and Aaron. And let's face it, Aaron could have had an axe to grind. Right? He had to be, he was enslaved. He lived with the Israelites. He went through hard times. But what about his little brother? <laughs> little Moses, right? Oh, they love little Moses. They put him in a little basket. They sent him down the river. Had my sister watch, my little sister watch him. Right? Then he gets picked up by Pharaoh's daughter. Lives in the palace. While I'm out here sweating my tuchus off. I said tuchus, that's right. Working in the labor, doing all this stuff, and he's up in the palace. Let's face it, Aaron could have had a, an axe to grind. He could have been upset. But what happens? He hears from God... And God says, go help your brother. And he goes and helps. And he does it with pride. See, he was proud of his brother. He was proud of what God was doing with him. And he wasn't worried that his brother was the star. Let's face it, everyone was talking about Moses. It was Moses this, Moses that. Aaron's going, hey, I'm the one who talked it. Yeah, he might be the guy, but I'm the one who has to say what happened, right? Gets no credit. But that still doesn't bother him. And then we get to this week's tour portion. And it's all about Aaron. Matter of fact, Moses' name is not even mentioned once. Because it's all about the priesthood that God's going to do. And that's what's so important. We see here a relationship that has developed. And they realize that God has a plan. And guess what? God's plan is a lot better than our plan, isn't it? And it's not about who gets the glory, 
Because you know who should get the glory in everything that you do? It's not all about you. It's about God. If He gets the glory, then you're doing something right. It shouldn't be people looking at you. You know, I hear <clears throat> all the... I know how it is to, to have a brother who's famous. Trust me, I know how it is. But I also know if I need anything from that brother, he's there for me first and foremost. Without a second hesitation. Because he understands that family comes first. And that's what makes a relationship special. When you can work with one another. And yes, I get people all the time, is he your brother? <laughs> I, I'll never forget, I went to a conference, I never do this, I went to a conference. And it was one I went by myself. It was the Lord was moving us to do, end up doing the festival in Argentina through it. And I went to this conference, and you had to wear a name badge. And everybody, I mean everybody there, was coming up and asking me, are you Jay Sekulow's brother? <laughs> and I don't mind it. I'm proud of him. But when a hundred plus people ask you it, <laughs> and then when you tell them yes, you go, no, you're not. <laughs> you're right. We're not related. We just have the same parents, but we're not related. You're right. My fault. How could I be mistaken? Right? I had all, I mean, it was, I literally, that literally happened at this meeting. And I remember that they had called in the first session, and this place was packed out. And I was, I had two seats next to me. And I don't know why I was saving, but there was one guy that I met. And he never asked if I was Jay's brother. And I saw him come in. And he was, it was late. And I, I waved to him and I called him and his wife over. And they sat down next to me. He goes, I got to ask you a question. Why did you save me these two seats? And I went and said, to be honest with you, you're the only person who didn't ask me if I was Jay's brother. And he started laughing. He goes, well, now that I know that you are, your brother and my uncle are good friends. I said, really? I said, who's your uncle? Paul Crouch. <laughs> Small world. When I told this gentleman the vision we had for taking the uh, Festival of Jewish Music and Dance down to Argentina, he knew one of the key speakers there. He said, I'm going to introduce you to him. He goes, we're going to make this happen. Sure enough, after the meeting, we went up there. We started talking. His name was Pastor Carlini. And he said, you're doing that festival in my town. And we did the first festival in Rosario, Argentina. Because God opened the doors. Because I didn't let the pride of my brother affect me. And that's what we had to be careful about. A lot of times we put... You know, we see other people doing stuff, and man, that pride gets in the way, doesn't it? Man, pride will take you down, and it will take you down hard. Just because someone's doing something better than you doesn't mean that you can't do something better than them. Right? Each of us has a calling and a gift. My brother is a great lawyer. If I have a legal issue, I'm going to him. But he can't preach where it diddly. <laughs> God gives us all gifts. I feel really bad for my middle brother. He's got that middle brother syndrome. He once had a purchase. So you know it's bad enough that I get in my Jay's brother. He once got a situation, and the guy came up and goes, I saw your brother on TV the other day. And he's like, oh, yeah, Jay. He goes, no, no, the other brother. <laughs> he gets it from both ends. But you know what? If I need someone who's an accountant and a financial person, he's the man I go to. Because he can do it better than Jay or I. 
And that's what's important, is we use our gifts and talents to help one another. Because when we do that, we become a body of one. And you don't want to mess with the secular brothers, I guarantee it. Because we'll get you any which way we can. And you don't think, just so you know, Jay has to deal with it too. He, he, he loves to tell the story. He used to live here in Atlanta, and he had, you know, people would recognize him. And, you know, when you're like that, you have to be kind of, you know, it's really nice. And he and his son were going to a, a, a movie theater, and he's getting popcorn. And the lady behind the counter goes, I, I, I know you, I know you. And he starts, he goes, he goes, she goes, you're Scott Seculo's brother. He said the movie wasn't that good after that. But see, it brought him down a notch or two. And that's what we see with Moses and Aaron. See, they worked together. They were a team. They didn't care who got the recognition. It wasn't about that. Because they can both take the honor, the trophy of what God was doing through them. And that's what he does for us. He puts you in people's lives to make a difference. There's a reason why God calls you back. Why do you feel an urge to, to be at a certain place? What makes that special situation happen? What happens when he puts that person that needs to hear your message? You know, I love it when we have people come up and share. And we don't compare notes. How do I know that? Because I don't use notes. So I know we can't compare them, right? But I love it when the messages just come together. Because God puts something on that person's heart, and he puts something on my heart. And it all just clicks. And it's for that person who comes to you afterwards and says, I needed to hear it. Or your word ministered to me. You know, we look at why do we do what we do? Sharing the gospel is not a job for me. It's my life. I enjoy it. I enjoy getting into the Word. And I'm blessed to be able to, be able to come up here and share. And maybe give you a, a little nugget to take away with. Because that's what makes it special. You know, our integrity is so important. When people can look at you and say, I can trust that person. That's important. Because that speaks louder than any certificate you have on your wall. When people can look at you and say, I'm okay, I can do this. You know, people get so involved with wanting to get rich. And it's not all about money. Matter of fact, if you look at it, most people that have money are miserable. And you ask why? Because they, they never learned how to do it. Because why does God give us the ability to make money? So we can help others. Yeah, you know, I got to share a few weeks ago on flipping houses. And I said, the first thing I started off with, I said, if you're going to get into this business, and this goes with any business you're in, I said, you need to open up two checking accounts. Your working checking account and your IRS checking account. And every deal that you do, the, when we do a deal, the first check that is written before any other check off of that money is a tithe. And the second check that's written before anything else is done is one I hate to write. That first one I love to write. The second one I hate to write. Because you know who I have to make it out to? Ira. Iris. 
IRS. And I put it aside and we don't touch it. Because you know what? I know when I give the money to God, he's going to bless me and give me more. When I give it to the IRS, all they want is more. But you have to be prepared. And that's what we see with Moses and Aaron. And now God says, this is Aaron's time. I'm going to make him the priesthood. Through him and his offspring, the, 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 the Kohens were established, the high priest. And he said, you know what? They're going to look good. They're not just going to run around in outdated, torn clothes. It's going to be special. I'm going to give them a hat to wear a belt, a breastplate. Matter of fact, when he dresses him up, he's dressed up as God's soldier. See, when we put on the full armor of God, too many people think you're supposed to look like a Roman soldier. Think about it, you grow, if you're Jewish, you won't get this. But you Gentiles that grew up in a church, and you had to put on the full armor of God, and you gave that picture, and they gave you to color it, what did it look like? Roman soldier, right? Who was God's biggest enemy? The Romans. Why would God make his soldiers look like Romans? I never understood that. But then when you started reading what he was wearing and you looked at the high priest, you went, ha ha, there's the connection. Because putting on the full armor of God is putting on the, the garments of the priesthood. Aren't you a living temple? Doesn't a temple have to have a priest? You are that living, when you put on God's full armor, you're not grabbing a sword, you're grabbing a shofar. It's God's weapon of mass destruction. It can take down walls of cities. How many blew down the walls of Jericho, do you know? Seven. I got four right here, three more and we're in trouble. It sends confusion among the enemies. Remember the story? What did they take? Lights and shofars. Man, you start hearing a couple hundred of those things coming after you. You're going to be running. We need to put on and become the priesthood of Aaron. Because we serve the ultimate priest. Yeshua, who's sitting on his throne. And you know what? We shouldn't get the glory. He should. Amen. And everything that you do, do it with honor. Let people look at you and understand what's going on. You know, it's funny in the, the meetings I go to for the flipping out, everyone, you got to have a nickname. We have a guy named Mr. Tycoon. Another gentleman's name is making a dollar out of a dime. They all have these catchy phrases. I had to come up with a nickname. You know who came up with my nickname? Emmanuel Lewis, Webster. What are you talking about, Will? No, that's right. That's the, no, that's the other brother, though. That's the other TV show you're thinking of. That's, that's Gary Coleman. He's not Gary. Gary's not with us anymore. Emmanuel is. Matter of fact, he's, he's in our new members class. All right? And he gave me the nickname, and it stuck. He calls me the flipping rabbi. <laughs> and I like that. Because it puts God first. 
People know when they're dealing with me that, they're, that, that you're dealing with a man of God. And I take it very serious. People will talk to me. You know, there's an old saying in the business. If you have a deal and you don't have it under contract yet, you don't tell someone else about it. I will have people call me up and tell me about it before they do it. Why? Because they know I'm not going to go around them. I'm not going to take their deal. Because I have to answer to a higher authority. And I take that very serious. And that's what makes it special. Because when you can do and show them what we're doing and show how God has blessed it, how can they argue with you? And it's because we put on the armor of God. We let people see who we are. And they're seeing not us, but God in us. That's what it means to be part of Aaron's priesthood. You get to do stuff that no one else gets to do. Aaron got to go in the Holy of Holies and, and, and be ministered to one-on-one -on -one by God. Guess what? As believers in Messiah, we can go into the Holy of Holies and get ministry from God. You know, Aaron's garment, there was something very interesting on it. What was on the bottom of his garment? Pomegranates and bells. Why? Have you ever thought about that? Was that like the fashion statement of the time? Now, I can understand the bells, right? Because what happens? He's the only one going into the Holy of Holies, right? If he, by chance, messed up, forgot to wash his hands before he went into the Holy of Holies, what would happen to him when he went in? God would strike him dead, right? We know that. We know what God did to his sons, right? So... The Mishnah teaches us that they would tie a rope around his leg as well. Why did they tie a rope around his leg? That's right, because who could go in? Nobody, right? So when they, whoever went into the Holy of Holies, they always had a rope around their leg. Now think about it, if they're in there and they're doing their stuff, you're going to hear the bells ring, right? ding a ling ling means you're alive. But why pomegranates? What? The seeds. Something about the seeds, huh? So do you know there's a... I've never done this because I love pomegranates. How many of y'all love pomegranates? Man, in Israel... You know, we get pomegranates here and they're these little things like this. Man, in Israel... The size of softballs, I kid you not. Huge pomegranates. Man, they're great. They were just in season a couple weeks ago. Man, I loved them. I ate, I had these little containers. I ate a pack of them a day. You know how many pomegranates are supposed to be in each? How many seeds are supposed to be in each one? 613. How many commandments are there? 613. Do you think God knew how many seeds were in there already before he did this? So what is it? the reason why the bells are there is to hear it, and the reason why the pomegranates are there is to remind us of the commandments. We see a beautiful picture take place. Because see, the bells have to work with the pomegranates, just like Moses had to work with Aaron. And Aaron had to work with Moses. So stop getting worried about who gets all the credit. Because you know what? It doesn't matter what man thinks who did it. It matters what God thinks. And God knows who did it, right? Amen. Judy had to teach me that a number of years ago. I had a lesson I had to learn. I was putting on the festival in Argentina and the head rabbi was getting all the credit. And that kind of bothered me at first because I did all the work. 
But you know what? Husbands, listen to your wives. She reminded me of that. It's not a matter what man thinks. It's a matter what God thinks. And in the long run, guess what? Everyone knew at the end who had done it. And I, you know what? It didn't matter to me at the end that I had done it. It mattered that God got the glory. Because it wasn't me who did it. It was God who used me to do it. And that's what we have to remember. He's going to use you in your workplace. He's going to use you in your family. He's going to use you in your day-to-day life. Give him the glory. Because you know what? Other people are going to see it. And that's what makes the difference. This week was Aaron's week. It was all about Aaron. And God made sure that everyone focused in on him. Because see, God knows it wasn't just Moses who talked to Pharaoh. And that's what it's all about. Teamwork. Work together to get God the glory in everything you do. Because that's what it's all about. Amen? Amen. I want everyone to bow your head and close your eyes. The best example of teamwork is what we have through our Father in heaven, our Messiah, His Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of the Lord. See, all three work together as one to bring us into His kingdom. If you're watching online or here in the congregation and you don't have that oneness in your life, The first step is you need to accept Yeshua as your Messiah. doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Gentile. He came for us all. And once that happens and you accept him in, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you and shows you what to do. That makes us one with God. It makes us his high priest. If you're watching online, wherever you are around the world, you can contact us on the information you see on the screen, and we will contact you and pray with you that prayer of salvation. But if you're here in the congregation right now, and you've never said yes to him, or maybe you want to rededicate your life to him, all you need to do is raise your hand and say a simple prayer. Is there anyone? Anyone at all? I see that hand. Anyone at all? Anyone else? If you want to rededicate your life to him right now, I want everyone to stand. As we pray this prayer, I want to pray to support of the person who raised their hand to rededicate their life to God. Abba Father, thank you for doing all that you've done. Lord, I rededicate my life to you. Let your Holy Spirit dwell within me. And let your Son Yeshua guide me in all that I do. Lord, renew my heart. I ask this in your Son Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen.